hello. <laughs> Bitcoin news today, 2020. Here we go. That's what we're about here. Welcome to the Crypto Profits live stream where we cover the most important crypto and Bitcoin news stories of the day every day. These are things you need to know to make you money. Now, today is Thursday, the 3rd of December, 2020. Uh, yes, this is really live. We are live on YouTube, Facebook, DLive, Theta. We are everywhere. Um, you can also see us on the replay on Minds.com as well. Now, if you're looking at this on Facebook, YouTube, it doesn't matter. Where, whichever platform is your preference, you can leave a comment below. I'll do my best to answer it during the live stream live with you guys. Now, if you're on the replay, still leave a comment, hit me up uh, with any questions you've got because I do answer them all myself. Now, if you're new around here, you probably don't know who I am. I'm Simon Johnson and it's my mission to help people make a passive income from crypto. Now, in these daily live streams, I cut through the noise, the BS, the hype, the nonsense that is out there, and there's so much of it, I tell you what, and I give you guys a much needed reality check. Some people want to geek out about the technology, I just want to make you guys money. Now, that's what we're about. So let's get straight into it. I've got some great news coming up, some really, really interesting stuff. So uh, hang around. Let's do a deep dive into it right now. Uh, we're going to cut over to this is a very interesting story. CEO, president of PayPal, Dan Shulman, and his first interview since uh, PayPal's decision to incorporate crypto, he says... Crypto will become an everyday payments tool and uh, spoke about the fact that the uh, pandemic is uh, has accelerated people abandoning cash. And I was like, that's pretty cool. That's, that's what we want to see. That is about maturing the... Uh, the blockchain industry, getting early adoption, all that sort of stuff. I love where PayPal's going at the moment with uh, with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Uh, he also goes on to say in, uh, in, in uh, actually this came out on PR Newswire, this was part of a, a PayPal press release, digital currencies are coming into the mainstream and his words, the time is now. And I couldn't agree with him uh, any more than that. So um, very, very positive stuff coming out of PayPal. If I was running a few cryptocurrency exchanges like Coinbase, Binance, etc., I would be keeping a very, very close watch on what PayPal is, is uh, doing there. So let's jump into the next one. We're going from PayPal into one of my favorite crypto projects. This project you might be familiar with. If you're not, get onto it. It's called Theta. Now, think of Theta. And actually, before I disclose any of this, I have bought and sold Theta before. Before I get into the article, full disclosure. Well, you know, we're not we're not about shilling or pr pumping up crypto or any of that nonsense here. I've owned Theta before. Um, I do run a Theta Edge node, and I'll get into what that is in a second. I'm not promoting it. I haven't been asked to promote it. No one's sponsoring this video. So before I get any comments about that, um, forget it. But I want to tell you, when Theta first came out back in the day, I thought, wow, this is this is pretty cool. For, for me, it reminded me of the early days of the dot-com industry, I wanted a piece of Amazon. Uh, you know, I was around back then. But, um, you know, just imagine if you guys are getting in on the action now. And I thought, this is fantastic. Now, for those people who don't know, think of it, think of Theta like a decentralized YouTube. So if you've got all the, all the functionality that's involved in YouTube, like streaming, caching, video delivery, all those core modules, this is what Theta is about. Now, I'm actually streaming on Theta. So a shout out to you guys. Thank you for letting me uh, use the platform. So really excited about it. And for people like me, I can diversify. You know, you can, you know, you can hit me up on YouTube, but you can easily go watch me over there on, on Theta or DLive. So there's a plug. <laughs> um, but let's get back to Theta. Yes, I run an edge node 
Um, it processes streaming and caching and stuff. It doesn't make much money, but you know you get paid out in T fuel, so in, in in gas, if you like, as a reward for running that node, which effectively anyone can run it. It's a bit of software. It sits on your computer. If your computer's on 24 seven, you know, it just uses your bandwidth and CPU and that sort of stuff. Now, why is this important? I've been running an edge node for a while. Well, they've just upgraded it. Um, now, <laughs> yes, you can go and install their software. You can download it, have a play with it, right? They've upgraded the software. Um, it's called Theta Edgecast. It's just come out this new version. It looks cool. I'm not going to show you the interface and all that sort of stuff. You can you can view it online. Actually, you know what? You can view it right there. There it is. There. There's their uh, release on it. Um, no need to hear me crap on about it. Um, what is the advantage of this thing? Well, think about it this way: decentralized YouTube heard of all the problems with with censorship and all that sort of stuff well welcome to the 21st century uh you can you put stuff up on here and it's uh, virtually untouchable so or you can put stuff up and you know get rewarded for uh, doing various things on the network so it's cool i love it it's got some serious backers um, enough said i'm not here to promote the uh the the coin or, or any of that sort of stuff um but if you're interested in other sort of alternatives to Bitcoin and Ethereum, things that have yet to pop up, do so. Um, have, have a look at it. I sold all my Theta coins at a profit and I'm quite happy with it. Would I buy it again? Yeah, probably. But I'm, I'm in love with Bitcoin and Ethereum right now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the honest truth. That's where it's all at. So... Let's get back into this. This is some, some really cool stuff I've got coming up here. Visa, Visa, the, the 100 pound gorilla in the room. They say they are connecting their payment network, 60 million merchants, 60 million merchants to USDC. Now, this is the US dollar coin from Circle. Now, if you don't know what that is, don't worry. It's just another bit of crypto. Basically, it means that, well, the theory is that Visa credit card holders can send and receive USD, uh, USDC payments. So why do I bring this up now? Um, I think this is one to watch. So let me just jump on over to this article in Forbes. Um, now, it mentions, while well, this is the key point, while Visa won't have custody of the currency, um, they're working on integration okay so and they've also joined i noticed down here they say um that circle has uh joined their fast track program so that's pretty cool um definitely one to watch with with visa interesting play re uh libra or dm or whatever they want to call themselves today um so you know we'll see we'll see what happens there but many people like me get excited with this real world use cases. I can't stress it enough. I'm not in, in here for technology for technology's sake to argue about, you know, what's cool and what's not and, you know, all, all the rest of it. So if, if you feel like, you know, if you're like me and you're like, hey, I'm in it to make money, right? I'm, I'm an unashamed capitalist. The technology is cool. I understand the technology. Yeah, it can really change some things. So I'm a big, I'm sold on the tech. Right, but I'm not going to get wrapped up in it for technology's sake. Um, how, how are you in this? Like, how do you guys feel about this? You, you know, do you are you like me? Are you do you have your own view? Let me know. Let me know. Hit me up in the comments. I I I'm really interested to find out. I, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm not alone in 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 any of this. Um, next article. This is just. Some bit of speaking of geeky things, <laughs> I had to I had to include this. Uh, this is an article from Slushpool. Now, for those who don't know, Slushpool is just a big mining pool. It's one of the uh, oldest ones around, but they uh, decided to. Uh, I guess the way they used it was the, the way they worded it was immortalize a uh, Reuters article title 
in the Bitcoin blockchain itself. And uh, as you can see, they said that, uh, where is it? 2020 dollar plummets on US stimulus hopes, Bitcoin hits all time peak. So that Reuters article has been uh, saved onto the blockchain for eternity. <laughs> um, yeah, you can you can do things uh, like that. It's 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 pretty cool, um, you know. And and another full disclosure. Yeah, I've used Slush Pool too. In fact, see that that miner there. It's been connected to Slush Pool before. Uh, did it make a million dollars and you know allow me to jump on a private jet and fly where I want? No, of course it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm probably the only uh, YouTuber who, who, who would admit that. <laughs> uh, bizarre, I know. So um, in some some other news, some trading news too, uh, we've got something out of Coinbase uh, that, that's, that's quite interesting. Um, if you trade on Coinbase, it might be interesting for you, or if you trade on, uh, I should say Coinbase Pro, um, you, you'll, you'll definitely want to know about it. Um, here's the deal. So Coinbase Pro will support new trading pairs, including Algo, <clears throat> excuse me, Chainlink, Uniswap. Um, look, I, you know, if you're into those coins, great. You're going to look at this and go, cool, I can go and trade with this. Finally, thank you very much. Um, for me, it's a bit of an accounting nightmare if you go and start doing all that sort of stuff. Um, I also think, you know, I try not to play in those sorts of sand pits. When it comes to when it comes to crypto, otherwise you're going to end up with a whole heap of loose change in the in the bottom of your uh, crypto exchange, if you know what I mean. Anyone who's say bought um, I don't know, pick something, bought bought Ethereum, bought Ripple, um, for example. That's, Ripple's probably a good one because um, it, it takes um, you need a certain amount of Ripple in your in your wallet to start off with. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Ripple that does that. So if you've gone and bought some Ripple, I don't know, maybe you transferred it, and it could be any coin to somewhere else, you're going to leave a fraction of it behind and you start trading things off like this, you end up with all this loose change. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? It happens it, and, and it's annoying. Now, some exchanges like Binance will allow you to mop it up and they'll just cash it in for, say, Binance coin or something, which is which is fine. You know, it reduces your trading fees. Um but I, I tend not to like it. But, you know, if you've got some coin around there, great. Now you can get rid of it. That's that's really what you should do. Um, now, one bizarre, strange thing that I, I, I never knew about. Put my hand up. I didn't know about this until today. I didn't know this was a thing in crypto. It's weird. But we're going to cover it because it's interesting. Here it is. Uh, Little Yachty, a rapper. He's tokenizing himself with his Yachty coin, as they would say in the US, or as we would say in Australia, Yachty coin. But we'll, we'll be American for a minute. Yachty coin, uh, it's going to be an Ethereum based token on the uh, Swiss, uh, Swiss based platform for use. I think that's pronounced, or it could be for use. Who knows? Who knows how this, uh, the, these guys pronounce this stuff? I've never seen the platform before. But it's interesting that people are tokenizing themselves and doing this stuff. Um, apparently, there are lots of people using this platform, and who knows? Now, is it going to work? Tokenizing yourself, selling coins in yourself? I don't know. But what I do know is that I've got this kind of funny feeling about it. When it was almost like when people started blogs and blogging and things. Or in YouTube, for example, people started and they were like, hey, subscribe to my YouTube channel or, you know, hit me up on my blog. And people were like, blog, please. Like, really? Um, I think this is like this, but I could be wrong because I've not, I've, I've, I'm not going to underestimate uh, this, this sort of stuff, particularly when it comes to people's egos. It reminds me of... What, what say could happen with say GoFundMe and that sort of stuff. Maybe in 10 years time, we're going to see more of this and maybe that's going to be okay for society. I don't know, but it's a bit weird. Um, is it a money grab? Is it dodgy? 
may be. But, um, you know, again, use case. Very interesting. Who knows where this is all going to end up. So stats and and this is this is what it's about trends what's happening out there i want to show you some patterns in something and i I think it's important particularly for new people who just sort of come into this industry it's important for them to get context so you know when the market's doing crazy stuff when bitcoin goes up and then it drops 30 percent and everyone freaks out and goes sell sell oh my god the sky's falling and you get all these youtubers going oh my god you know with you know the thumbnails i'm talking to you about i'm guilty of that i'll i'll put those thumbnails in there right um but but you know i'm I'm not guilty of the the fear and the hype and the rubbish that gets put out there like you know emergency oh bitcoin's gonna drop and we're all gonna lose money and we're all gonna die no no you'll only die if you go and sell don't be an idiot right that's that's the reality you know (laughs) um so i want to talk about patterns now Patterns in a mining company. Have a look at this one. This one's this one's interesting. So this is Riot Blockchain. And Riot Blockchain, if you look at their... They're a publicly listed company, by the way. Um, if you look at their price over time on January... I'm going to move my mouse. I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about. Now, this is like the height of the so-called bubble right the bitcoin bubble where it all crashed right it all went down here now and then it petered off and then for a good six or seven months went into this curve then out of then out again peaked up in in april 19 and now it's peaked here so just look at that look at that big kind of bowl like this now Let's go on to the next thing. The next thing is Google Trends. Same thing. This is the search term for Bitcoin. Notice the pattern, right? Exactly the same dates, right? 2019, bang. This is pe- this is this is people's interest in Bitcoin, and that's the share price. Interest. Share price, right? Very similar. Very, very similar. Um, Now, the reason I bring that up is I do think it's important for people to think about uh, context, as I said, so that they don't freak out. But what it also tells me is the market's got a long way to go to get back up to that um, 2020, sorry, 2018 level. So if you think about the price of Bitcoin now is, is 19,354. I'm looking on my chart. It's, there's another monitor over there. You can't see it, but I'm surrounded by them. Um, the price of Bitcoin is back to those levels. But if you look on the chart for interest, interest, is still down here. Interest is 15. It was 100. Share price, right. Where did it go? 40, nearly $42. There it is, 42.18. Now where is it? Right, 8.94. That's a long way off. Right, that's miles away. So you understand what I'm, well, you understand what I'm talking about. Some of these, you do a similar map for, say, Ethereum. You'll see Ethereum's price there. It's $611 right now. You know, Bitcoin's at 20 grand. Ethereum was at 1,000. I think I mentioned that yesterday. So you might just, I want you to think about that, put in your thinking when it comes to investing and, and, and stuff like that. This is where you can actually use the news and, and some stats um, in, a, in a way that is going to actually make you some money. Now, speaking of all things tech, um, another bizarre use case, it's not something that's unheard of, but uh, the country behind it is, this is a, how can I put it? This is the United Nations. (laughs) 
uh, putting aside what one may think of the United Nations, uh, this is the UN uh, creating a blockchain framework for Afghanistan for land titles. Yes, Afghanistan. So uh, this is going to be a digital land registry using blockchain, which is really cool because obviously over there when you've got a piece of paper and there's something, oh, I can't remember how many land divisions over there, I think it's like 2 million or something. Um, they're creating this Go Land registry over there. Um, I do have a brief article on it. Um, there you go, 2.8 million land parcels. So they're talking about uh, immutable transactions, obviously, um, and tie them to occupancy certificates, and they can be looked up using an open source blockchain verification tool. So Forbes did a, uh, a great article on it. There it is right there, UN challenging first assignment in Afghanistan. And uh, here's the UN, uh, sorry, the uh, Afghanistan's foreign minister uh, talking about it. So if you're interested in uh, in that, go and have a, go and have a read. Um, but again, why aren't we seeing this in other countries? Why, why aren't we doing it here in Australia, the US, you know, everywhere else? Our agencies, particularly government agencies, need to embrace this tech and, and run with it. I think it's a great thing. If they can do it in Afghanistan, why can't they do it here? That's what we should be asking. Um, now, on the flip side of good government is bad government is people doing bad things. <laughs> and uh, when when uh, when we hear, when the market hears any sort of regulation, it has all, well, nine times out of 10 a, a, a really negative reaction, particularly when the US, someone has an inquiry or someone, a politician says something. Well, now we're hearing some rumors about regulating wallets. Yep. So this this isn't good. This uh, this isn't good. I don't know what's going to come of it, um, but here's here's what we know. Here's the deal. So we know from um, some tweets from uh, Brian Armstrong here that uh, the U.S. Treasury was looking at crypto wallets, and the upshot is, and you know, I won't bore you with all of with all of this, but the the deal is simply this. It's a view that the US could regulate crypto wallets and they could do so in a way that uh, forces crypto exchanges to ask you for identif uh, you know, ID documents before you transfer the money out of a crypto exchange somewhere else. So if you, for example, have got one of those Ledger hardware wallets or a Trezor, uh, you know, Americans go Trezor or Trezor. Um, we'll just call it Trezor. Hardware wallet. If you've got one of those here and you've got some money, say, on Coinbase or Binance or Crypto.com or wherever, I know I'm going to be missing a few. Um, let's say you transfer. So let's use Coinbase as an example. you got some Bitcoin on Coinbase. You want to transfer it here on your hardware wallet because you don't like someone else having access to your funds. Good. And that wallet's anonymous. No one knows that I own that wallet. No one knows what the, I mean, people could look up the wallet providing they knew the number, but the government doesn't know the number. And because we're decentralized and because we uh, have some privacy, the government doesn't need to know the number. Now, so here's the problem. The government now wants to know the number. So this is, this is the issue. So if this happens, there's a whole host of stuff that would have to be done at exchanges. What does it mean practically? I think what will happen is if the US does this and it's bloody stupid and they shouldn't do it. So if anyone's watching who has any sort of input on this, don't be a fool. <laughs> um, I think this will force people to go offshore. I think it will. I think it'll force people to you know, hide this stuff overseas or they'll just use overseas exchanges and move everything out of the out of the reaches of the US. So that might be po might be a good idea to start up an exchange in the Cayman Islands or somewhere, or <laughs> I don't know, all the British Virgin Islands. Um, who knows? But, you know, this is what happens when governments stand up and they start regulating things and they start meddling in uh, things they don't understand. 
Um, it's 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 not good, not good at all. So let's have a look at the Bitcoin price, and uh, I want to talk about some of the speculation that's around today as well. Um, you know, Bitcoin is at this funny point at the moment. Um, let's have a look at it. It's sitting. This is as of right now live. It's nineteen. Well, oh, there we go. Just jumped up there. Bang. <laughs> um, 90,357. Um, here's the deal. There's a lot of speculation of breakouts. You know, could it jump over 20K and stay there? Could it drop 30%? Could it go back up to 12? You know, could it go down to 12K? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. That's the reality. Here's, you know, here's what it's done previously. I mean, this is... You know, yes, we've seen, you know, 2020 has been a good year. This has been a good year, right, for Bitcoin. It's been a great year. Uh, you know, short of going back to uh, 2017, I think it's been a great year. Uh, yeah, I bought I, I bought Bitcoin here. I bought it back here. I bought it here. I also bought it here. Um, and I bought a, uh, another Bitcoin somewhere here. Um, so... You know, and now we're now we're up here, which is great. Sorry, we're a bit past there. Um, so where could it go? Who knows? What's my gut feeling? Well, my gut feeling is there is always a retracement after long periods like this. Some people put it at 15%, 20%. Um, you know, and this is because investors, uh, traders, and other people take profits and then reinvest it and all that sort of stuff. They go into trading. I'm not going to go into trading. I'm not going to give you financial advice. And, and you know, you shouldn't, shouldn't be listening to people who uh, are doing this and they're not qualified. And, and I know when to put up my hand and say, hey, I'm not going to give you that. What I will say from my own observations and my own many years in, the, in, in this industry is, there's always a retracement, right? There's always, it shoots up, then it drops back a bit, and then, you know, more forwards up, up, and it just comes back. We may see that here. It may drop. Could it drop to 12K? I doubt it. I really doubt it. Could, is it possible? Yes. Um, is it likely? No. Uh, not when we've got such, you know, uh, bullish news, you know, at, at the end of, 2020 and we've got a weak US dollar people are pulling money out of gold there's reports about that um, I, th I think there's too much here you know now could could something blow up could an exchange get hacked could uh, could a government introduce policy that, and that affects the market negatively yes this is the world we live in this is the sand pit we play in when when we're investing in, in Bitcoin so expect that retracement now having said all of that, I believe it's, you know, 2021 is the year of Bitcoin. I think we're, we're well past 20K and, you know, the, the, the sky's the limit. Um, I say that based on the history, based on where we were back in 2018 and how mature the market is. And I think people have, um, you know, invested a lot of money, particularly institutions. They understand it a bit more now rather than it being a bit of a hypey dot-com darling thing or a new bit of tech that no one understands. Um, I think we've got some maturity in the marketplace. Um, the market is, is is developing a bit more. We've still got cowboys. We've still got crazy people. We've still got scammers and pump and dump um, exercises going on. Uh, but I think we've got some decent people here too. And that's, that's what we're about. So... If you're thinking of buying Bitcoin, it's a you know it's a big thing, particularly if you're buying one Bitcoin. It's twenty grand, All right? Now I know some people, particularly in Australia, who have superannuation and stuff. They they want exposure to it. Institutions want exposure to it. They're buying Bitcoin. If I had a million bucks right now, would I buy Bitcoin? Yes, yes I would. That is what I would do. Would I buy gold? No. So that's. That's the reality. That's my personal opinion. But again, this isn't financial advice. I'm not. A, I'm not advocating that you go out and do this and blow all your money and 
don't come crying to me when you know the market debt goes down thirty percent and you freak out, right? <laughs> because that's it. If you know, if you're not willing, and I started out with this view, and it's 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 been around. You've probably heard it before. Don't invest what you're not prepared to lose. That's the reality. Don't do it. Okay, so if if you know all you got is a hundred dollars to your name, or a thousand dollars to your name, or ten thousand dollars to your name, don't throw it all in there. That's silly, um, and you should seriously seek some you know financial advice. That's my disclaimer over with. <laughs> um, so you know, I would really appreciate your thoughts. I want to know what you guys are thinking. Um, are you taking a long term view? Are you holding? Are you trading? What are you guys doing? Hit me up in the comments, um, or if you if you've got a question, you want to shoot me a a, a, a message. I'll be uh, glad to uh, answer it here on the live stream, uh, perhaps tomorrow. Um, if you're watching this on the replay and you love crypto, hit the like button. You know, if you like these videos, if you're getting value out of them, just let me know. A simple like would be uh, would be great. I'm happy to do uh, videos on particular topics. So uh, definitely hit me up. Um, if you've got any more questions, let me know. But otherwise, be sure to jump on YouTube, DLive, Minds, or any of those other places and watch some of my other videos. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good day.